This is the Coeur d'Alene Planning and Zoning Commission. It's uh, Tuesday, March 10th, and this is our regular scheduled March meeting. Uh, would you do the roll call, please, Shanna? Jordan? Here. Bobby? Here. Ingalls? Here. Lutrip? Here. Messina? Here. Ward? O'Brien? Peasant. And we're one short, too. Uh, as a reminder, I guess while it's on my mind, uh, we have an opening on the Planning Commission, and you can call the Planning Department at the City of Coeur d'Alene, 769-2300, if you're interested in putting in an application to be considered for, uh, for the Planning Commission, and they can explain that to you. So, next of all, uh, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so next we're down to the approval of minutes from our February 10th meeting. Any corrections or additions? Motion for approval. Motion to approve the minutes. And I'll second that. Any discussion? Motion by Ingalls and a second by Bowlby. Seeing no discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> okay, so the minutes are approved. Uh, now we're down at the public comments section. This would be for any member of the public that would like to address the Planning Commission, and this would be for some kind of an item of general nature that's not on the agenda tonight. If you're here for one of the hearings tonight, then there'll be some time to testify on that. Okay, seeing none, staff comments. Heather? Uh, good evening, Hillary, Commissioners. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's all right, Hillary. Good evening, Commissioners. I have a few staff comments this evening. Um, just wanted to update you on a few things if you weren't aware. Our um, Sean Holm in the planning department worked on moving forward a request for a food truck event. And so the council approved a pilot event for April 12th that's in conjunction with National Grilled Cheese Day. So that will be happening here in the lower parking lot at City Hall in the library. So that'll be fun. And if that works well, there might be another one that uh, we'll have to go before council for approval that'll be in conjunction with Carter Lane. There's also the Earth Day Fair on April 18th and planning will have some staff represented at that. And then a quick update on the grant that we're working on, that Frontier Grant for America's Best Communities. We're on track for that. Submittal date is March 25th. And the CDA TV team has been helping with some videos. We can upload five videos to help tell our story. So that's exciting. And then last Friday, we did a Midtown Walk. So my whole planning department, we went and met with the mayor and city administrator and Councilman Gukin and walked around and evaluated some of the properties that are owned by LCDC and the housing company, just to kind of evaluate that space and some of the spaces around there along forth to figure out what things might work to make it uh, a more interesting and desirable place to, to get a little bit more bike and pedestrian activity. So that was a fun, fun event. And lastly, the April agenda, we have three public hearing items tentatively scheduled for that. So those will be coming forward. Thank you very much, Hillary. I got to thinking, would you want to explain just briefly, touch on that Frontier grant for all the people watching? Sure, I can and touch on that. So it's um, a multi-tiered, multi-year competition, and um, the total amount that Frontier and partners will be giving out is $10 million. So we're going to be competing for that. The first round is the 50000 And it we basically, it's for economic development, and so it can be anything that'll qualify for a community to be promoting economic development. And so our proposal for City of Coeur d'Alene, we're partnering with CDA 2030, Heritage Health, Kootenai Health, University of Idaho, Chamber, and others, is to focus on a community center for healthy living that's in line with Dr. Abate's HERO program, and then focusing on having community gardens and expansion of the trail network. So kind of focusing on creating a more healthy community to attract talent and also focus on health care jobs and training opportunities, et cetera, because there's quite a bit of multiplier effect for 
jobs in that industry. So that's our focus. Thank you very much. Uh, did any commissioners have a comment of a general nature? Okay. All right, it's time for our public hearings. We have three public hearings tonight. And these are all quasi-judicial hearings, which means that uh, if you want to testify on this hearing, then uh, you need to sign up on one of the sign-up sheets uh, back there on that table for, the, for whichever particular hearing you're here for. Our attorney Warren is back there right now by the sign-up sheets. And uh, then if you'd like to testify, you can step up to the podium there where Lori is right now, and she's going to do our staff report. Thank you, Warren. And, uh, and I will state your uh, name, and I will swear you in. And uh, then you'll have five minutes. The uh, applicant will have up to 30 minutes, and then there'll be some time at the end for rebuttal. Okay, uh, go ahead, Lori. I guess it's all yours. Oh, I thought of one thing. Is there any conflicts to declare on this one? Okay, excuse me. Pardon me for that. Go ahead. Thanks. No problem. Thank you, Commissioner <coughs> George. Um, the first file that you have before you is the Miller Development Group is requesting a zone change from R12, which is residential 12, to C17, which is a commercial zoning district. So we don't have that. Is that okay? <laughs> for just a second. We don't have the overhead on. I can continue. We don't need pictures. We can see it. We have it, a couple of councilmen and rookies. Can't. I mean, councilmen and okay. Okay. Yeah, I could have done that. Thank you. Sorry for the delay. Okay. Woody was here. So the request that we're hearing tonight um, for the zone change is from Miller Development Group, and they're requesting a zone change for their property at 3113 Government Way from R12, um, which is a residential 12 zoning district, to C17, which is commercial zoning district. Uh, the C17 district would allow for a variety of commercial uses. This is an aerial of the subject property. Access is currently provided by a local access road to the south. The applicant has met with engineering staff to extend um, 2nd Street, um, but that's something in the future um, that's been in the discussion, but not part of this application. So the Planning Commission tonight must consider this request um, and make separate findings to recommend approval, denial or denial without prejudice. And so the four findings that they're considering tonight is that the proposal is or is not in conformance with a comprehensive plan. The location, design, and size of the proposal are such the development will or will not be adequately served by existing streets, public facilities, and services. That the physical characteristics of the site make or do not make it suitable for the request at this time. And that the proposal would or would not adversely affect the surrounding neighborhood with regards to traffic, neighborhood character, and or existing land uses. So when making the first consideration for the um, first finding that the proposal is or is not in conformance with a comprehensive plan, the comprehensive plan shows this area, it identifies it as Northeast Prairie, and this is a transition area. These areas are expected to change greatly within the planning period for the comprehensive plan. Um, furthermore, the area is composed of a variety of zoning districts. This is what Northeast Prairie looks like today including residential and commercial uses in this area. These are some of the previous actions that have happened in this area. All of the zone changes that are shown there in green, um, these are previous actions, so these are all previous files. Um, all of these were from R12 to C17 zoning district. And this ranges um, from about 90 to 2004 um, when these approvals happened. The second finding is that um, 
that the location, design, and size of the proposal are such that the development will or will, will not be adequately served by existing streets, public facilities, and services. And staff had received comments from city departments regarding the proposed zone change. Water and wastewater did not have any objections to the zone change request. Um, the engineering requires permitting at time of site development, um, and traffic is not anticipated to be during peak hours for the proposals. And the fire department does not have any comments or conditions as part of this request either. And finding B10, that the physical characteristics of the site make or do not make it suitable for the request at this time. There are no um, topographical or physical constraints that would make this unsuitable for commercial zoning. Finding B11, that the proposal would or would not adversely affect the surrounding neighborhoods with regards to traffic, neighborhood character, and or existing land uses. The engineering department had commented um, and noted that the proposed zone change would not impact the traffic generation. The current zoning is R12, and this is a uh, screenshot of the current zoning map, and it's bordered by seven, uh, C17 zoning district um, around the the site as you can see um, and there's also a PUD um, to the east um, and then some R12 to the east as well and it is consistent with adjoining land uses as well um, most of that is commercial there's some single family and then there's some vacant properties as well Staff um, does not have any recommendations at this time. Um, there were 141 notices that were mailed in February, and we did receive two um, public comments, and I believe that they were put into your packets. But just to summarize, one had stated support of the proposal, and then the other comment had requested a height limitation for, of two stories um, to be placed on this request. And finally, the commission is to consider this request and make an appropriate findings um, to approve, deny, or deny without prejudice. And you will find your findings worksheet in your staff report. I entertain any questions that you might have. Any questions? You look like you have a question. I do. Thank okay. you. Uh, good report. Uh, on the traffic, uh, how is that done? Um, since in, in this case, correct me if I'm wrong, this is a zone change. Right. So, you know, if you read through the applicant's narrative, it sounds like this may want to be mini storage. Right, and that's, and, yeah. and, and so is the analysis based on mini storage or because it, they're not really locked into that, is the analysis done with the full range of possible commercial uses if they change their mind after uh, the, zone, uh, the zone change might go through? You, you, you follow my, mm -hmm. my question. You take the worst case of all the, <clears throat> the sure. possible uh, things that could develop there? So, um, Commissioner Ingalls, the staff relied on engineering staff to provide those comments to us regarding traffic. And it's my understanding that they took it on the, on the scenario of um, what the proposal was and then also on um, how the access is today. Um, so that was in their consideration when they were discussing traffic. Um, but I think that's a great point and something that the commission should keep in mind is that the C-17 zoning district does provide for a variety of uses. Thank you. And I, against, I also have a question on the access, and that would have to be on 2nd Street. Am I not correct? Because there's no access from government way. So right now... Um, and the applicant may be better to speak to this. Um, the, uh, there is a east, um, like a, a local access road that comes from Government Way to access the existing um, structure that's there. Um, and then there is, I mean, Second Street would have to be developed, but it looks like it, it, it could have a <laughs> approach to be able to get there. Um, there has been discussions with the applicant and the engineering staff to extend Second Street. Um, but again, that's in a proposal stage and hasn't been anywhere near finalized with staff. Thank you. <coughs> Anything else? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Would the applicant come on up? <laughs> Good 
ahead and state your name and address, Chad. Uh, Chad Oakland, 418 South 13th Street. Okay, and you swear the testimony that you are going to give us will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. Okay. Please proceed. So, uh, do you guys want to talk about the, the, I have had some conversation with engineering. We would, would like to get that 2nd Street Road through there. Uh, main reason is engineering seems to think it might take some pressure off 4th Street and Government Way also. Because um, you do have some multifamily to the south. Mm -hmm. uh, but our, you know, we want to get the C-17 zoning. We are, our intention is to put some mini storages in there. And obviously, you know, that's our intention as of today. I don't see it changing unless, you know, but things happen. So I don't know if you guys have any questions, but I don't really have, it seems pretty cut and dry to me, but. Uh, yeah, real quick one. Well, you can just, you're just, <laughs> it, it's up to you to present whatever you want to present about your proposal and why it should be a, approved. Well, I think it makes sense know. to be zone C-17. We're at, we have C-17 all the way around it. I understand it's been residential forever. Uh, we do have an access road off of Government Way. Uh, I believe, and I could be correct, uh, I own the north seven and a half feet of my section, and I believe the gentleman to the south owns the south seven and a half feet. Uh, I have no intention at this point in time to use it except for possibly a, uh, a, a fire uh, emergency to get in or out. And I think we, we talked with uh, the fire department about that a little bit. I don't know what happened there. But uh, our goal, is, our intention is to come off of 2nd Street. So, okay. so I got a question, Chad. You said you own some other property outside of the subject property. I do not. Okay. But then there is... I'm trying to figure out what this access road on Government if Way see, is. And the the thing is, is it the access road on Government Way, the subject property is way back. So I know you say you have no intention of using that, but when you say access road, is there an easement on that property in front of you from Government Way? or I've got an easement. There's a 15-foot easement down. If you can see where it says e-access, there's a 15-foot easement along there. Uh, I guess your question would be that if it was zone C-17, what if I decided, well, I'm just going to get access off there? Uh, I don't believe I could do that because of, of fire issues. I think I don't know what the fire, uh, how wide of a road they have to have, but I don't think that would, if you wanted to do a development there. We don't have anybody here from uh, engineering tonight, do we? He said uh, everything was fine. No, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> so, so I guess I'm a little confused because I'm looking at a subject property. Mm -hmm. And you're saying you have access from Government Way, but access to Government Way on the property that adjoins Government <coughs> Way isn't part of this, and it isn't part of the property. So I guess I'm saying, how do you have access to that? Well, right now I have access. I could if I could get access off of 2nd Street if I wanted to. Right. But right now the address of the subject property is Government Way. 3113 and a half Government Way. Right. right. Okay. Well, go ahead. She's because he has that 15-foot easement and yes. uh, my question is for Ch Chad to yes. kind of help define where you're going because right. I have the same question I I really feel there needs to be a condition in this and that second street is is um, developed and I don't know if we can put that as a condition because I do think we need to have better access to this property so if you look at uh, the staff comments from the engineering department, they mentioned as a component of the site development, the developer in conjunction with the city will be constructing 2nd Street to a full street section along the easterly boundary. Um, so at the time, so we don't have of, to the time of construction, it. that's anticipated that that road will, okay. will be, or the time of development, the road will be constructed. Primary access will be off of 2nd Street okay. coming down from the north. There is the mm -hmm. secondary access point coming off of Government Way that could be potentially a fire access lane, something like that, but primary access is coming off of 2nd Street. And I wasn't sure if that was a suggestion or if it was something that had to happen. And so that was my concern. Yeah, they're going to need to be able to have essentially for any, you're going to need street access. Sure. So. Okay, that's, I, that clarifies mm -hmm. my questioning. And I believe that worst case scenario, I have to, if I, I have to do 2nd Street down to the south line of my property, but we're working on trying to get it all the way through. That's what I understand. I don't know how that's coming along, but. Mm -hmm. So I guess I would just add in to, to you, Warren, or Hillary, or Lori. Sometimes we'll see a condition in, in, in these, uh, in our packets here, you, you know, about obtaining right away or, provi or providing right away or so forth. But you're saying in this case it isn't really an issue because um, 
uh, they can require it at building permit time. Yeah, that'll okay. all be dealt with at development time. Okay. okay. That's all I needed. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that solves that. Mm -hmm. Did that answer your question, Tom? Yeah, I'm okay. fine. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions of the applicant? Okay, anything else you'd like to add, Chad? No, I appreciate okay. your time. You bet. I think you have about 27 minutes left, but nothing <laughs> says you have to use it. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, then uh, I'll go down the list here on people I have on the sign-up list here. Uh uh, Ernest Warner, in favor. Do you wish to testify? Okay. Okay. And John Cool, Kulachek or Cool? I'm sorry about that. Uh, I okay. I don't have whether you're in favor or opposition, but you'd like to testify. Yes. Okay. Come on up. State your name and address, and I'll swear you in real quick. Hello, I'm John Kulhanek, and uh, my family's been in the house. Okay. Just real quickly here, I need to swear you in. Do you swear the testimony that you're giving us tonight will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Thanks. Yeah, okay, five my minutes. My family's been in the house to the south, which is 3108 Government Way, for 43 years. And as you can see, things have closed in on it over the years, but that's to be expected. Um, Right now, I don't see any reason why changing to C-17 would be, be bad as far as you know, keeping it R-12, as everything else is around there is going to C-17. Um, what I'm concerned about is the easement, which was stated was 7.5 feet, both from the 3113 property and my property, which is 3108. And then two government way that easement is goes with uh, Mr. Mullins property and Nelmar's property which is seven and a half feet so I guess it's four different properties with all with the easement anyway I'm concerned also about the second street which I have a garage building that is is right where the second street would run through if it went down to my property and um, and then there was the concern of, you know, it's always been a sheltered, you know, somewhat private area for being in the city. And I was concerned about, you know, looking out my front window and, and not knowing what's going to be there. Um, it, it appears it's going to be, you know, self-storage units, which isn't the worst thing. <laughs> but uh, I just would like to know what's going on and, and be informed and and go from there. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. So, sir? Oh, oh, hold on. We have a question did, for you, I did guess. Did I understand you say that you have a garage that's on 2nd Street? Yes. Is there a way to... So is that 2nd Street, is that a, a dedicated street all the way through, Warren, or not? It stops at my property from the south and then it stops at the the 3113 property from the north mm -hmm. and every, every time the land has been developed up to that point they've pushed second street just that much further from the from the north there was there was no second street from niter and then when they built a little mini mall it they they moved second street down and each time it was developed it was moved closer and closer well, the street can be there, but not developed. It's just on the right of way. Right. But it's not right of way for the entire length. At this point, uh, Second Street extends roughly to the northern edge of the subject property, and from there, I, I believe this gentleman's property is to the south of that. So there would still be need to be some right of way acquisition to the south of this. But there's no obstruction to getting right of way to the north that would get us up to up to Second where it exists today. That would then take you up to Niter. So the, the second street that borders on the property we're in question, that, is, that there's no right away that needs to be purchased. Yeah, so we would work with the developer. It would essentially extend across their property. So we'd, 
acquire the right of way from, from the developer to extend access road for them. Further south from that point, we would the city would need to acquire right of way still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his garage is in the path of 2nd Street, but it's not in the right-of-way of 2nd Street. Exactly. It's still private property. Could you blow this up a little From bit? this photo, it looks as if the garage is just on the yeah. edge. They, they had it up there, but then it... Of the potential right-of-way. Yeah, it's uh, just a screenshot, that, so just, unfortunately oh. I can't bring it down. Right. I mean, that's yeah. what it looks like. Um, is there a way to zoom in? But I can't tell by the photo. Maybe that. Well, I guess one. it depends on how wide they well, are. Right, it does, because it's right on the edge. Yeah. Mm hmm. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. There's the. It's right on it. You're right. right. There. And there's Second Street. Does that help a little bit? Yes, yes. It could be. That does help. <laughs> it's hard mm -hmm. to. At some point, when he develops his property, whenever that is, then. You can see the Second Street. The garage it stops right in move. between the. And yeah. Then it does. My garage is. At the south end of the. Mm hmm. It's that white building down mm -hmm. at the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, right on the direction of the road. Okay, I guess uh, you're all done. Thank you very much for your testimony. Thank you. Okay, Alan Lee, come on up, sir, and state your name and address. I'm Alan Lee. I live at 3114 Government Way. Okay, Mr. Lee, and do you swear the testimony that you're going to give us will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. Okay. Um, the thing that I that we had the question about was the actual address itself. Um, currently, on the east side of Government Way, all those numbers are even numbers. Um, Mr. Mullen's address is 3112, and ours is 3114, which is just to the north of his from that access road. Um, they have it currently listed as 3113, and we contacted through a realtor, the planning commission for the city, and then they re referred to the county, and then the county referred them to GIS. And GIS indicated that that was an erroneous address, that it w should not have been 3113. Um, 3113 is actually the uh, Bambi trailer cart court across the government way. And so we had a little bit of a question about the actual designation of the property itself as 3113. Um, we don't really have any pros and cons one way or the other as far as the development of the property. It's just that we kind of felt that the clarification there, um, whether or not that would be valid to designate it as 3113 and, and it's not 3113. Mrs. McKechnie, whose property that used to be her actual mailing address was 3112 and a half. So I don't know whether that would be more well, I, appropriate designation or... I can tell you, that the county's responsible, I believe, for assigning address numbers. Yeah. And so at such time that they try to develop that and pull a building permit, it, it, when, <laughs> when it wrote, correct me if I'm wrong, Warren, when this goes through all the channels, it'll go to the county and get an address number assigned to it. So they'll probably correct it then. Yeah, from what we understand, they've been kind of bouncing that back and forth. But GIS has notified county several times that that was erroneous. And then they, the county has indicated that they knew that was an erroneous address, but they haven't made that designation as far as you know, making it correct or whatever. But that was one of the things that we had. And then if, if the access itself were... I, I understand from the previous speaker, his, we actually drove up second from going up from Anton, and when you get, I mean, from the curb placement and things like that on second, he would have to literally shear off several feet of his garage in order to go through from that direction. So I understand what his concern might be there. Um, 
It is wide enough for a fire truck. The that Mrs. McKechnie's, well, she's no longer with us, but her house was started on fire here a while back, and the fire truck did come there. But the um, hydrants actually are located on the north west corner of my property and the, the northeast corner of my property right adjacent to uh, where Aaron's currently is at along that road but other than that like I said we don't have any concerns the traffic obviously isn't going to concern us and I assume they're going to be probably fencing the property off or something so we don't have that kind of trafficking going through so that was all our concern was. Okay, sir, thank you very much. Can I have Corey Stack? That's interesting. Did you wish to testify, Corey? Okay. I have you in favor. <clears throat> I do have some background on the addressing if you're. Okay, sure. Um, so back in 2000, um, I don't know, 2004, <laughs> uh, the county was readdressing for the 911 systems and they had to readdress all of the mobile home and RV parks in the area, in the city. And so because they had one address of 3113 for the Bambi RV park, they were required to address off from their interior streets. So they no longer have the address of 3113. And because that was a 3112 and a half address, the available 3113 went to the property, to the subject property. So 3113 is their placeholder until they can get a new address based off from 2nd Street or another street that they might access off from. So it was mostly, it was for 911 um, and that was finalized in 2009. Thank you, Lori. Interesting. Okay. Uh, that's all the people I have. Was there anyone else that wanted to testify on this hearing? Okay, Chad, you have some time for rebuttal if you'd like to come up and say anything else. Okay, so that closes the public testimony. Is anyone ready to make a motion? Uh, I'd, as a discussion, I'd, if I could, if I could throw out a, a thought as a discussion and see see where the others are at. Yeah, I think this is really about the zoning and the compatibility uh, and not so much about access. You know, we've heard the concerns and whatnot, but, you know, truth, truth is that uh, the owner could develop something there uh, as an R12 uh, tomorrow. They could come in with a permit, and I would assume that would trigger some sort of a, some a access uh, discussions whereby Second Street may be required to be extended to the property line to the south. And so, you know, that access and what happens with Second Street, I, I think, is kind of really not germane, you know, to, to the zoning. This is about compatibility and whatnot. Uh, the, the person's garage, uh, that's, that's an issue uh, to be sorted out, uh, whether that stays R12 and becomes apartments or something, or whether it becomes mini storage. Uh, I, I think the city probably has a, a master plan of a hopeful uh, eventuality of getting that street extended, but you know that other that's piece to the south is probably a, another day. So I think this is not so much access; it's about compatibility and uh, zone change. Would you like to make a motion? I would motion that uh, this is approved. This would go to city council as a, basically a recommendation. Uh, we're not the final say on this one. This is uh, this would be a separate hearing, Warren. Yeah. So oh. from here, we go to City Council, who would make the final determination on zoning. So we would either you would work through the the worksheet tonight, or you would direct staff to make findings and bring it back to you. That would be at your pleasure. I know you want to get out of here. So, uh, I would go ahead and uh, make a motion with the findings, uh, if. Uh, if we're ready for do you, that. Do you want to do the findings or do you want staff to do them? I think I can w get through it. Okay. Uh, so the motion would be uh, that this matter has come before the Planning Commission on March 10th and there being present a person requesting approval of 
Proposed zone change from R12 residential at 12 units per acre to C17 commercial at 17 units per acre zoning district applicant Miller Development Group LLC. Uh, the location as described in the staff report, uh, 1.78 acre parcel at 3113 Government Way. Uh, findings to be uh, B1 through B7 uh, from the uh, page one of the staff report. B8, that this proposal is in conformance with the comp plan policies in that this is an area in transition and that this proposal uh, is supported by um, comp plan uh, goals 1.12, 1 1.14, and 2.01. Uh, that the public uh, facilities and utilities are available and adequate for the uh, proposed use, and that is based on the uh, uh, staff comments that are recorded in the staff report. B10, that the physical characteristics of the site uh, do make it suitable for the request, uh, again, as supported by the staff comments that were provided in the uh, staff report. And B11, that the proposal uh, would not adversely affect the surrounding neighborhood with regard to traffic, neighborhood character, or existing land uses uh, based on the traffic uh, analysis and the, uh, the zoning would being compatible with uh, the surrounding uh, parcels. Uh, conclusion and decision that the Planning Commission, pursuant to the aforementioned, finds that the request of Miller Development Group LLC for a zone change as described in the application should be approved with no special conditions. Okay, so we have a motion by Ingalls in favor of approval. Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second that. Go ahead. You want to okay, second, second by Messina. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Mr. Chair, we yep. have a, a, with this zoning comes certain, there's each zo uh, area of the zone has certain height restrictions. Is that not correct? Mm -hmm. So we had one individual that came in here and was proposing that they have no more than two stories, whatever the building may be. It would seem to me that, 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 that I can see where he <clears throat> may feel that way, but the zoning dictates the, the height on it. So there's nothing that is appropriate for us to address as far as addressing that person's concern about height restrictions? Not, not unless, yeah, we could come up with some, you know, there was a logical reason to put some kind of height restrictions on this, which but I don't, I don't see normal, right now. Uh, no, in our normal course of events, whatever, uh, whatever the zoning is, accompanying that is certain height uh, right. maximization. That, that would be no, that'd be no different here with it than anything else. I just want to make sure he understands we consider that, but there's nothing to consider. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, roll call, I guess, Shannon. Bobby? Yes. Ingalls? Yes. Messina? Yes. Lutrip? Yes. Okay, so that passes unanimously. Miller Development, ZC 1 15, zone change from R12 to C17. Okay, the next hearing, uh, the applicant is Dorothy Dahlgren, director of the Museum of North Idaho. The address is 332 North Hubbard Avenue. This is a proposed community assembly, religious assembly, special use permit in the R8 zoning district. This is also quasi-judicial, and this is SP 1-15. Uh, Does anyone have a conflict to declare? I don't have a conflict, but I m mentioned to uh, Mr. Wilson that uh, I came down for a workshop on the Four Corners and I picked up this Museum of North Idaho brochure from uh, uh, the museum director. And in it is a little description of this uh, project they're proposing. So uh, I don't think it's a conflict. I just wanted to share that I have done a little reading on the ma matter. I'm not the attorney, but I don't think our attorney sees a glaring conflict <laughs> because you read the newsletter either. No, that's not a conflict. 
I assume it's consistent with our packet. It's the same sketches? Yeah, uh, yeah I, I assume there's... Okay, <laughs> I don't... And I don't, I don't think that's part of the record tonight. Uh, okay, Laura, you're doing this one too? I am. Thank you, Commissioner Jordan. Um, <clears throat> the project that you have before you is a special use permit request from the Museum of North Idaho, and they're requesting a religious and community assembly special use permit within the RA single family zoning district. And this would allow them to continue their current uses that they're, that they're providing on on the site and also to um, build a restroom facility as part of their expansion. Um, currently, it is a legal non-conforming use. Um, I mentioned that in my staff report as far as they have provided a lot of historical documents to be able to show that it's been legal non-conforming for several years. And so they could continue their, their use as is, but in order for them to um, do the restroom facility, they need they would need a special use permit to be able to expand that. So that's why this request is coming before you tonight. The property is located at the corner of Hubbard and Woodland, and this is in the Fort Grounds neighborhood. Um, the chapel um, is part of the property and is owned by the Museum of North Idaho. Um, this is a site plan, and it shows the layout of the existing chapel and the location of the proposed restroom facility. Um, the chapel is as it exists today along Woodland Drive and then the proposed restrooms um, would be considered a detached accessory building and would be required to meet, um, you know, setbacks that would um, in the zoning district. And the planning commission must consider this request and make separate findings to approve deny or deny without prejudice. Um, finding BAA that the proposal is or is not in conformance with the comprehensive plan, that the design of the planning of the site is or is not compatible with the location setting and existing uses on the adjacent properties, and that the location, design, and size of the proposal are such that the property will or will not be adequately served by existing streets, public facilities, and services. This property is within the historical heart area of the comprehensive plan. This is listed as a stable established area and that the character has already been largely established and that the character should be maintained. This area contains a mix of uses with an array of historical, residential, commercial, recreation, and mixed uses within the historical heart land use area. And there have been some zone change approvals in the vicinity. Um, these properties were both rezoned from R12 to R17. Um, the sub subject property is there a little bit to the, to the south. Um, and then uh, the, the zone change was mostly associated with um, the properties to the west is North Idaho College um, areas. Finding B8B. Um, the design and the planning of the site is or is not compatible with the location setting and existing uses on the adjacent property. This gives a little context of where we're looking on the corner of Woodland and uh, Hubbard, so it gives an idea of what the site is like. The current zoning um, is R8SF, and in this zoning district it does allow for special use permits for religious assembly and community assembly. And across the street is R17, and that's North Idaho College property as well. Land uses include mostly single-family residential and civic uses. It's currently is civic use in that blue, and then single-family residential is denoted in the yellow. Finding B8C, the location, design, and size of the proposal are such that the development will or will not be adequately served by existing streets, public facilities, and services. Uh, the comments, staff received comments from the city departments regarding this proposal for the special use permit request. Water and wastewater departments had no objections or additional requirements for this request. And the fire department noted that access and fire flow have already been met and engineering had no objections or conditions for this special use permit. Uh, the staff does not recommend any current any conditions at this time, and 55 notices were mailed uh, in February. Staff did not receive any uh, written comments regarding this proposal, and the Planning Commission must consider this request to make appropriate findings to approve, deny, or deny without prejudice. I'll answer any questions that you might have regarding the project. 
So I guess no restrooms were required when this was built. Um, the applicant pro can probably speak to that a little bit better than me, but it's my understanding that the, that the restroom facilities need to be updated and uh, the best location is going to be outside the facility. Hmm. Any other questions for Lori? Okay. I guess you're off the hook for now, Lori. Uh, Scott, are you representing the applicant on this? Okay, come on up. State your name and address. I'm Scott Cranston, and I reside at 729 Government Way in Coeur d'Alene. Okay, and do you swear the testimony that you're going to give us will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Okay. Um, I'm Good. the architect assisting the Museum of North Idaho for both the proposed restroom facility and also assisted on the special use permit application. Um, as you may be aware, the Museum of North Idaho is the trustee of the Fort Sherman Chapel. And uh, the director of the museum, Dorothy Dahlgren, is also here tonight in case you might have questions regarding a historical or operational type question. Um, as Lori had stated, uh, the purpose and intent of the special use permit application was meant to accomplish two things. One, bringing the existing community and religious use activity into compliance with the existing R8SF zoning. And the second is to allow a detached accessible restroom facility on, on the grounds. The uh, chapel currently has no plumbing facilities whatsoever in the building. Uh, years ago there was kind of a, a makeshift restroom that was built in the existing basement crawl space of the building which was not accessible but not too long ago uh, the sewer line on that collapsed and its connection to the sewer system in Woodland Drive has since been abandoned by the city. So with this application it would allow the restroom facility that would help support the museum's ongoing uses for the users that have specific use of the building as well as for any special uh, activities like weddings and, and neighborhood gatherings. Um, we believe, the, I know Dorothy has worked closely with the, uh, the adjacent homeowner to, directly to the south in locating the building so that uh, the neighbor is happy with its location. Uh, as you may see in your packet, the new accessory restroom facility will uh, kind of reflect the architectural character of the chapel, uh, utilize similar exterior materials and match the existing color. So it's going to be a rather, rather small structure, so we feel it is in keeping with the scale of the neighborhood. Um, the historic nature of the building itself, of course, is one of the original uh, structures still remaining from the Fort Sherman days and the chapel itself uh, I think is kind of an important element of the historical architectural and cultural fabric of the neighborhood and conforms to the comprehensive plan uh, where it speaks to uh, those very things in the historic heart of the city. So um, as you may be aware, uh, there's a church group that regularly uses the chapel. There's morning AA meetings there, and uh, a number of weddings occur there over the course of the season. All revenue generated from use of the building goes into a dedicated fund that goes directly to the preservation and maintenance of the chapel and the grounds. So having a a restroom facility there is going to be important for that ongoing use and revenue stream to continue. Uh, the restroom will be used only by the chapel's users or specifically for specific events that might be occurring there. So uh, they'll be locked during essentially non-business hours for the chapel. So with that, field any questions you might have. Okay. Uh, any questions for Mr. Cranston? 
Yes, you did such a good job. There's no <laughs> questions. Very clear. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chris Laurie, uh, have, would you like to testify? No. Okay. I have you in favor. Would anyone else like to testify on this uh, matter? Okay. Mr. Chair, if, if no one's going to testify on behalf of the, I, I would like to make a comment. In our packet, we have the short version and the long <laughs> version of the history of the chapel. It may also be in that pamphlet. But I want to say this is very well written, and I still thank Mrs. Nash for all the work she did many years ago. It's just it's very, very well written, and it gives you a, a good idea of, of the historic nature of that area in the chapel. Okay, well, Scott, you have some rebuttal time, but I don't think you need to use it. Thank you. Since you mentioned my, my uh, pamphlet, if I could mention one thing in here that I think is, is good to note, and I, I would ask Mr. Cranston a question, I, I guess, is uh, it stuck okay. out to me that, uh, that it says in here that you donated your services for this project. Is that mm -hmm. correct, sir? Yes. I think if you talk to him very much, you may have to come up here. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that you donated your architectural services for this, I, I th think, is very commendable. Yep. We commend you. Okay, would anyone like to make a motion on this? Sure. I'll figure out if we approve of the church having a bathroom. Yeah, I like letting you guys do it, you know. Let the new tired. guy do it. <laughs> I would uh, make a motion that uh, we approve this special use permit. Uh, I will make the findings based on... Uh, the introduction of uh, this matter having come before us on the uh, 10th of March, this being SP 115, a request for a community assembly and religious assembly special use permit in a residential 8-SF uh, zoning district. Um, applicant is the Museum of North Idaho uh, on a 0 .241 acre parcel known as 322 Hubbard in Sherman Park. That we adopt findings uh, B1 through B7 in the packet uh, and pursuant to section 1709.220 special use permit criteria, a special use permit may be approved only if the propose, proposal conforms to all of the following criteria to the satisfaction of the Planning Commission as set forth uh, in B8A that the proposal is c in conformance with the comp plan, comprehensive plan, uh, in that it supports the goals listed on page 5, 1.12, goal 1.14, and 2.01. Uh, that the design uh, B8B, rather, the design and the planning of the site is compatible with the location setting and existing uses on adjacent properties. As Mr. Cranston points out, the, uh, the way the project has been fit in there uh, to be compatible with the architecture of the chapel and the color and, and, and uh, residential scale, etc., cetera, uh, blends nicely uh, with the uh, surrounding neighborhood. B8C, the location design and size of the proposal are such that the development will uh, be adequately served by existing streets, public facilities and services, and that is based on the staff comments from water, wastewater, uh, engineering and such that uh, services are available. In conclusion, uh, as a decision, the Planning Commission pursuant to the aforementioned finds that the request of the Museum of North Idaho for a special use permit as described in the application should be approved with no special conditions. All right, do we have a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Pretty straightforward. <clears throat> All right, Shanna, roll call, please. Bobby. Yes. Ingalls? 
Yes. Messina? Yes. Lutrit? Yes. Okay, so that passes unanimously. The church will have bathrooms. Uh, SP 1 15 is approved. Thank you, Warren. All right, so our final hearing tonight, the applicant is the city of Coeur d'Alene. The location is Burlington Northern Railroad, and this is a pro proposed annexation from County Industrial to City C-17, uh, commercial 17 units per acre zoning district. This is legislative, and this is A-1-15. And we have Tammy that just popped in. And Thank you, Chairman. Ready Chairman. to do the presentation for us. All yours. Go ahead. All right. Again, the applicant this evening is the city of Coeur d'Alene. It's an annexation request from County Industrial to C-17. And the location is a 9.557 acre strip of former railroad right-of-way between Mill River Development and the Riverstone Development. And this is the decision to point this evening. So this is the subject property, and it spans from the east edge of the Mill River subdivision all the way to the, city's, uh, lim the city limit, and this is Bella Reeve. And you can see it a little more clearly here in this pink. And this is River's Edge, uh, the annexation that took place a few years back, and then this is the Stimson or the former Stimson mill site. So this is uh, where it runs from Mill River all the way to Belle Reve. So you'll be required to go through all the findings in order to make your decision this, this evening. And a little bit of background information. Um, the applicant again has requested the C-17 zoning district. There are a number of uh, uses that would be allowed in the C-17 zoning district, but I'll begin with the um, comprehensive plan. So finding B-8, that this proposal is or is not in conformance with the comprehensive plan, uh, this falls within the Spokane River District, and it is in transition. And this yellow outline is the location, roughly, of the subject property. Finding B-9, the public facilities and utilities are or are not available and adequate for the proposed use. Uh, we didn't get any comments, and all the departments had no issues because of this annexation and it just being the railroad right-of-way at this time. That the physical characteristics of the site do or do not make it suitable for the request at the time. At this time, uh, the subject property does not have any topographical issues. That this proposal would or would not adversely affect the surrounding neighborhood with regard to traffic, neighborhood, character, and or existing land uses. So the surrounding area has a diverse land use pattern ranging from single family dwellings to the west, Mill River. Uh, there's a mobile home park uh, near Hutter Road to the west. There's some commercial across Saltis and to the north and some manufacturing. So at this time has a mixture of residential, commercial, manufacturing uses and that have been continuing for a number of years. So again, this is the subject property. And currently, um, this uh, former, or this property is vacant and undeveloped, but it is within the city limits of Coeur d'Alene. And this property is the Stimson, or the former Stimson mill site, which is outside of the city limits at this time. And Riverstone, which has a mixture of apartments and commercial uses. And then this is our zoning map. Currently, the northern portion of the former Washington Trust site is commercial. The southern portion was zoned R12. And again, this is outside the city limits for now. And the request is for C-17 along this former railroad right-of-way. So I wanted to go back to discussing a little bit more on the comprehensive plan. Uh, again, it is in the transition area of the Spokane River District, and I have noted the significant policies in your staff report on pages 7 and page 8, or excuse me, pages 6 and 7.
and this physical, the physical characteristics appear to be suitable for the request at this time. And the last portion, there were 88 notices mailed on February 20th, 2015. And the Planning Commission must consider this request and make appropriate findings to approve, deny, or deny without prejudice. And you have your finding worksheet. And there will not be any more testimony since the City of Coeur d'Alene is the applicant for this request. Any questions? Tammy, <clears throat> I'm looking at this as really unusual <laughs> in that um, did we have to work out anything with the county since we're going through the county? I mean, how does that all work? So uh, this is a bit unique. Um, Very unique. <laughs> the situation is that the city will be closing on this property towards the end of spring. We'll be the record owner hopefully here in another month or so. So part of the process is to bring this into the city so that our ordinances can take effect and we can regulate our own property. Uh, part of it is also recognizing that we're going to want to put this property to use either in developing it for the good of, of the public, most likely in the use of a, a bike path, or potentially looking at trading this property with the surrounding property owners and, and getting closer to the water so that we can provide water access for the public. So those are the, the goals that the city have has at this point in acquiring the property. As far as the annexation, the, the piece through, um, I guess that'd be the, the westerly piece, that area is already annexed into the city. That's not an issue. There are some restrictions on shoestring annexations. Right. That restriction really applies to you can't annex a piece of property when it's only connected to the city by a shoestring. Here we're not trying to go out and, and sort of go down a road right of way to get some piece of property out there that we otherwise couldn't get to. Here we're really interested in annexing the connection, which is our own, what will, will be our own property. Um, at this point, BNSF is not, they're not concerned. They've told us that they're fine with this. So at this point, that's where we're headed. Yeah, it's, it's uh, very unique. <laughs> that's why I wanted to hear legal explain exactly how how it was going to work. Thank you. But one of the key issue is it is going to be used for open space or public uh, public use in some fashion or traded for uh, uh, something equal or better. That's that's the goal. That's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's very good. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> any, any other questions of Tammy? Mm -mm. Okay. Thank you, Tammy. I do have one person signed up to testify. That's uh, Sandy Young. No? Okay. Then I don't have anyone else. But I do have you in favor of it, Sandy. Okay. Would anyone like to make a motion on this? This may be one that the city staff could do the findings on it. Is there a conflict in that? Well, he didn't I would any, think. I didn't anybody speaking against it. I'm sure <laughs> they, they should take it the whole way. Yeah. Is there a conflict, Warren? No. There isn't. Um, we can do that. However, given, <laughs> I think it, it would be helpful if you could do it tonight. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I agree. It's not. Uh, there's not legal conflict. It's just. It's more a timing thing. Trying to get right. this through okay. to council, so that we're coinciding with our closing. I didn't know they were getting that close with the closing, but that's good. Because it puts it a month out if you don't do it, right? Yeah, so if it's not done tonight, we'd end up coming back to right. you next month, and that would put us another month slower getting right. to council for the right. hearing Whenever there. Whenever we don't for the make annexation. it here, then it puts you out. Yeah. Are you so. doing that one, Heather? Yeah, I could do okay, it. Okay, sure. great. Um, that will be your legacy. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that I did the first shoestring. Yeah. Um, this matter having come before the Planning Commission on March 10, 2015, and there being present a person requesting approval of item A115, a request for zoning prior to annexation from County Industrial to City C17 Zoning District. Applicant, City of Coeur d'Alene, location. 
Uh, plus or minus 9.55, seven acres of former railroad property lying between the east end of Mill River subdivision and Riverstone development. I would like to adopt B1 through um, B7. Uh, that this proposal is in conformance with the comprehensive plan as follows. And I would like to put um, 1.03 with the waterfront development, encourage public and private development to cooperate. Um, 1.4, 1.11, 1 1.12, and 1.16. All, all of the ones that were in the staff, not all of them, but the majority of them in the staff report. Page, yeah, there. there are. And let's just put 2.05, 3.05, 3.13, and 3.14. I think all of those are really appropriate to have in the findings. This is uh, in the Spokane River District in that there is mixed uses. There are commercial. There are residential. Scale and intensive intensity of development will be less than the downtown core. Um, And I really like the open space parks, pedestrian, and bicycle connections that, that this will create. Um, okay. We're also in a transition area. That the public facilities and utilities are available and adequate for the proposed use. This is based on the staff report. Um, we were given that the, there's plenty of... Um, Room for the sewer and the water, stormwater, and traffic engineers have indicated that there is no problem, no concerns. Engineers, street engineers, there are no concerns, and fire, there are no concerns. That the physical characteristics, this is B10, excuse me, that the physical characteristics of the site do make it suitable for the request at this time. The topography of this area is relatively flat. It's along the river, um, and it would make a beautiful um, walkway, park, whatever we may need, and a great connectivity for Mill River and the Riverstone area. B11, the proposal, that the proposal would not adversely affect the surrounding neighborhood with regard to traffic, neighborhood character, and or existing land uses. Again, the staff reports that this is not going to be used for cars, be more or less used for uh, walking. It was previously a railroad, Burlington Northern Railroad, and that was to access um, the mill, and that has been and will be abandoned. Um, it would be a mixture of residential, commercial, and manufacturing uses that could use this for many, many years for a walkway and or access to the river. Um, the Planning Commission, pursuant to the aforementioned finds at the request of the City of Coeur d'Alene for zoning prior to annexation, as described in the application, should be approved. Okay, motion by Bowlby. There a second? No second. Second by Messina. Any discussion? Okay, Shanna, roll call, Sorry. please. Bowlby? Yes. Ingalls? Yes. Messina? Yes. Lutret? Yes. Okay, so that passes unanimously. Legislative item A-1-15, Burlington Northern Railroad. Uh, motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we're adjourned until April. Thank you.